What if everything around us, the people, the stars overhead, the ground beneath our feet, even our bodies and minds, were an elaborate illusion? What if our world were simply a hyper-realistic simulation with all of us merely characters in some kind of sophisticated video game? This, of course, is a familiar concept from science fiction books and films, including the 1999 blockbuster movie The Matrix. But some physicists and philosophers say it's possible that we really do live in a simulation, even if that means casting aside what we know or think we know about the universe and our place in it. So could it be that the universe is an elaborate game constructed by bored aliens? Are we really living inside a simulation? Stay tuned till the end to find out. Before we jump to any conclusion, let us understand the difference between reality and a simulation. Countless brainiacs and psychedelia enthusiasts have pondered that question for centuries, formulating theories that run the gamut from scientific to mystical. From a purely empirical standpoint, the answer seems obvious. Reality is anything we can perceive using one or more of the five senses – taste, smell, touch, hearing, and sight. But some outside-the-box thinkers, including philosophers and physicists, contend that that's not necessarily the case. It is possible, they theorize, that reality is merely an ultra-high-tech computer simulation in which we sim-live, sim-work, sim-laugh, and sim-love. So, what does all of this mean? If we take the red pill and step through the looking glass, simulation theory posits that we are all likely living in an extremely powerful computer program. It sounds far-fetched, but Swedish philosopher Nick Bostrom showed in 2003 that it's more probable than one might think. In his seminal paper titled, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation?, Bostrom explained that future generations might have mega-computers that can run numerous and detailed simulations of their forebears, in other words, ancestor simulations, in which simulated beings are imbued with a sort of artificial consciousness, and the odds are we are products of that simulation then it could be the case that the vast majority of minds like ours do not belong to the original race, but rather to people simulated by the advanced descendants of an original race. It is then possible to argue that if this were the case, we would be rational to think that we are likely among the simulated minds rather than among the original biological ones. New York University philosophy professor David Chalmers described the higher being responsible for this potential hyper-realistic simulation as a programmer in the next universe, perhaps one we mortals might consider a god of some sort, though not necessarily in the traditional sense. Who knows, they may just be a teenager hacking into a computer and running five universes in the background, but it might be someone who is nonetheless omniscient, all-knowing, and all-powerful about our world. Brain spinning yet? Get used to it. The theory also builds on the argument philosophers have been having for centuries, which is that we can never know if what we are seeing is real. Simply because we perceive the world as real and material doesn't mean that it is so. In fact, the findings of quantum physics may shed some doubt on the fact that the material universe is real. The more that scientists look for the material in the material world, the more they find that it doesn't exist. Renowned physicist John Wheeler, who worked with Albert Einstein decades ago, once said physics had evolved from the premise that everything is a particle to everything is information. He also coined a phrase that's well known in scientific circles, it from bit, meaning everything is based on information. Even the definition of a particle in physics is kind of fuzzy and may in fact just be a qubit, a quantum computing bit. Even more mind-meltingly, theoretical physicist David Bohm once posed this tortuous notion, reality is what we take to be true. What we take to be true is what we believe. What we believe is based upon our perceptions. What we perceive depends on what we look for. What we look for depends on what we think. What we think depends on what we perceive. What we perceive determines what we believe. What we believe determines what we take to be true. What we take to be true is our reality. And what we take to be true more than a few folks believe, among them tech entrepreneur Elon Musk, who famously said the odds that we're not living in a simulation are one in billions, might now or at least someday be merely the effect of simulated brains and nervous systems processing a simulated world. To Musk's unique way of thinking, the strongest argument for our probably being in a simulation is that, as he put in 2016, 40 years ago we had Pong, two rectangles and a dot. That is what games were. Now 40 years later we have photorealistic 3D simulations, with millions of people playing simultaneously and it's getting better every year. And soon we'll have virtual reality, augmented reality, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, the games will become indistinguishable from reality. So how would simulated reality work? 
what AI is to dystopian blockbuster The Terminator, simulation theory is to the Wachowski siblings' sci-fi thriller The Matrix, which depicts as a post-apocalyptic world in which a race of machines have captured most of humanity and imprisoned their minds within an artificial reality known as The Matrix in order to harvest humans' body heat and electrochemical energy. In the film, humans going about their everyday lives didn't realize they were actually living in a simulation because a cable plugged into their neocortices beamed signals into their brains and read their reactions. One way to achieve that in the real world would be to gain a greater understanding of human consciousness and how it works so we can produce conscious AI. The far less technical alternative is tricking our consciousness into thinking that we are in reality when we are in a video game in which non-player characters exhibit intelligent human-like behavior that passes the Turing test. Believe it or not, this is coming. In fact, quantum computing may play a major role in advancing in-game AI. In Bostrom's 2003 paper, the philosopher argued that if humans are able to survive thousands of years to reach a post-human state, one in which we have acquired most of the technological capabilities consistent with physical laws and material and energy constraints, it's likely they would have the capabilities to run ancestral simulations. That type of post-human simulator would need sufficient computing power to keep track of the detailed belief states in all human brains at all times. Why? Because it would essentially need to sense observations of birds, cars, and so on before they happened and provide simulated details of whatever was about to be observed. In the event of a simulation breakdown, the director, whether a teenager or giant-headed alien, could simply edit the states of any brains that have become aware of an anomaly before it spoils the simulation. Alternatively, the director could skip back a few seconds and rerun the simulation in a way that avoids the problem. We're likely not there yet, but we think we will be at some point. There are 10 checkpoints on the road to a full-blown simulation and we're nearly halfway to our destination. So is it true that it is all a simulation? Mathematicians have proved that a universal computing machine can create an artificial world that is itself capable of simulating its own world and so on ad infinitum. In other words, simulations nest inside simulations inside simulations. Because fake worlds can outnumber real ones without restriction, the real multiverse would inevitably spawn a vastly greater number of virtual multiverses. Indeed, there would be a limitless tower of virtual multiverses, leaving the real one swamped in a sea of fakes. So the bottom line is this. Once we go far enough down the multiverse route, all bets are off. Reality goes into the melting pot and there is no reason to believe we are living in anything but a matrix-style simulation. Science is then reduced to a charade because the simulators of our world, whoever or whatever they are, can create any pseudo-laws they please and keep changing them. Just as present-day researchers use simulations to digitally create scenarios to aid scientific study, what would happen if we eliminated mosquitoes? Our world and every moment of our past existence might be the simulated experiment of future humans. And just as scientists can terminate simulations of earthquakes, weather, etc. when they no longer provide useful data, so too can our hypothetical overlords pull the plug at any time without warning. But rest assured, it would be a quick and painless death. Then again, you might be wondering, why does any of this matter? What is the purpose of proving or disproving that life as we know it is merely a digital construct an existence simply an immensely complex experiment in someone's virtual terrarium. The broad answer is that all good science pursues truth, more specifically, our truth. If we do in fact exist inside a video game that requires our characters to perform certain quests and achievements in order to progress, wouldn't it be useful to know what kind of game we're in to increase our chances of surviving and thriving? What do you think? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe with all notifications enabled for more in wonder content. Or in Have you ever wondered where NASA and SpaceX get their money from? Is it the White House or are there some crazy rich space enthusiasts? From satellites to billion dollar telescopes, space probes to manned missions on other planets, these could require tons of money. While Uncle Sam has been kind to NASA for this stuff over the years, private players have to look out for their own. There's a big difference in thinking between governments and the private companies that participate in space. While entities such as NASA can work on understanding basic human health or exploring the universe for the sake of a greater understanding, private companies have a limitation. They need to eventually make a profit. So join us in today's video as we look into some concepts of how private companies in the space world today are making their money. You see, we are having a move towards more privatization in space. 
and also a move towards general private use of space activities and future manned space activities. You can imagine that even for the upcoming 10 to 20 to 30 years, public funding is the basic funding for space activities, while in other areas, we are already seeing that private money is doing its work if you look to communication and if you look to other activities, like, for instance, research in space. But commercial spaceflight is already taking place. The two successful companies in NASA's latest round of commercial contracts, SpaceX Dragon and Boeing CST-100, are each receiving government money to develop their private space taxis. The companies are responsible for meeting certain milestones to receive funds. There is quite the element of risk involved because the commercial contracts are only given out in stages. You could be partway through developing the spacecraft and then discover you will not be awarded one for the next round. This is what happened to Sierra Nevada Corps, whose Dream Chaser concept did not receive more money in the announcement last month. The company has filed a legal challenge in response. But was this just an exception? Private companies such as SpaceX have been making fortunes off their space endeavors. Let us look into how SpaceX gets its money. SpaceX, formerly known as Space Exploration Technologies Corps, is an aerospace manufacturer and space transportation service founded by Elon Musk in 2002. SpaceX was created to reinvigorate public interest in space exploration, which Musk hoped would channel more funds to NASA. By 2005, it had already amassed 150 employees. SpaceX now has an impressive list of achievements, becoming the first privately owned company to launch, orbit, and then recover a spacecraft. It was also the first such company to send a spacecraft to the ISS and reuse an orbital rocket. SpaceX is now valued at $74 billion and continues to attract strong attention from investors for its visionary products. SpaceX is essentially a delivery service. If an organization wants to send goods to the ISS or launch a satellite into orbit, the company uses its fleet of vehicles including the Dragon, Falcon Heavy, and Falcon 9. As successful as SpaceX has been, it should be noted that it competes with several other companies for space delivery services. These include Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and Northrop Grumman. With all of that said, let's take a look at some specific SpaceX revenue streams. Governmental Supply Contracts SpaceX has won several NASA contracts to resupply the ISS. The most recent contract involves $2.9 billion in funding to build a spacecraft to send astronauts to the moon. The company has also worked with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, launching a satellite in 2012 to monitor global sea levels and oceanic circulation. The cost of this launch was approximately $82 million. Similar contracts for the Air Force saw the launch of a GPS satellite in 2015 and in 2020. SpaceX won a contract to provide 40% of all U.S. military launch requirements. In more recent years, SpaceX has made more money from commercial service deliveries. Each delivery using the Falcon 9 rocket is advertised at $62 million. Starlink Starlink is a network of satellites designed to give high-speed internet access to every citizen on Earth. Although the project is in its infancy, SpaceX has already secured government contracts to bring high-speed internet to rural U.S. customers. Finance Services from Morgan Stanley estimates that the service will be offered for $50 a month giving SpaceX $24 billion in annual free cash flow by 2040. Civilian Spaceflight On September 15, 2021, the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft became the first crewed orbital mission without professional astronauts. The mission, named Inspiration4, was piloted by self-confessed space geek and billionaire Jared Isaacman, who only had around 6,000 hours of experience piloting various aircraft. Inspiration4 was powered by the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, and the company also ran a six-month training program for Isaacman and the three other crew members. While considering his options in the planning stage of the mission, Isaacman noted in an interview that there was no question it was going to be SpaceX, they're leading the path. Indeed, SpaceX already had a proven track record of transporting astronauts to the ISS. The company made an undisclosed amount of money for facilitating the Crew Dragon mission, though USA Today estimates that the deal would have been worth somewhere in the tens of millions of dollars. Another big private player in the space genre is Boeing. Boeing Company is one of the world's top aerospace companies. It develops and manufactures commercial airliners and military aircraft, strategic intelligence and defense systems, and weapon systems. Its biggest customer is the U.S. Department of Defense. The company offers its services to international customers, providing financing for its orders and customer deliveries. 
Boeing's military-related business centers around the design and manufacturing of fighter aircraft and transports, bombers, helicopters, and missile systems. It also has a cyber defense unit. Boeing's space and communications business manufactures the Delta range of launch vehicles. These vehicles include the inertial upper stage and rocket engines. Boeing makes money by designing and manufacturing aircraft for the commercial and military sectors. It also develops and builds weapon systems for the U.S. DoD and the export market. Boeing is a diverse company and its business model includes intelligence and strategic defense systems. Boeing's four business segments include defense, space and security, commercial airplanes, Boeing Capital and Global Services. The defense, space and security units are Boeing's leading revenue sources. Boeing's commercial airliner division handles the development and manufacturing of commercial airplanes. It also provides customers with lucrative fleet support services. Boeing's BDS department involves research, development, and manufacturing of military weapon systems and aircraft for mobility, strike, and surveillance operations. This division of the business also researches, develops, produces, and modifies strategic defense and intelligence systems and satellite systems, its largest customer being the U.S. Department of Defense. Boeing's global services offer platforms, systems, products and services to its defense and commercial customers worldwide. This part of the business includes management of its supply chain and logistics, maintenance, engineering, upgrades, modifications, spare parts, pilot training systems, digital services, and data analytics. Boeing Capital offers its customers financing for its products. Its portfolio includes equipment sold under finance leases, operating leases, notes, and receivables. It also manages assets held for releasing or sale and its investments. Virgin Galactic and its founder, Richard Branson, are perhaps the most visible of the companies that are looking to bring private citizens into space, as long as they can pay $250,000 for a ride. The first flight of Virgin into space is expected in the next year. Customers must pay a deposit up front upon registering and then the balance before they head into suborbit. In the case of Virgin, Branson has a portfolio of companies that can take on the financial risk during the startup phase, but eventually the company will look to turn a profit through the customer payments. The business case for Planetary Resources and Deep Space Industries, the two self-proclaimed asteroid mining companies, hasn't fully been released yet. We assume that the companies would look into making a profit through selling whatever resources they manage to dig up on asteroids, but bear in mind it would cost quite a bit of money to get a spacecraft there and back. Meanwhile, Planetary Resources is diversifying its income somewhat through initiatives such as the ARCID-100 telescope, which will look for asteroids from Earth orbit. They raised money for the project through crowdsourcing. NanoRacks is a company that has research slots available on the International Space Station that it sells to entities looking to do research in microgravity. The company has places inside the station and can also deploy small satellites through a Japanese system. While the company's website makes it clear that they are focused on ISS utilization, officials also express an interest in doing research in geocentric orbit, the Moon or even Mars. As entrepreneurial rocket companies come closer to shooting the first space tourist into the void, perhaps even this year, another reality is dawning. The business of space is no different than new industries everywhere else. It's tough to launch. Up until now, companies competing in the commercial space race have been blessed somewhat by the glamour of it all. Investors enthusiastically, maybe too much so, backed a host of startups including those headed by superstar names like Sir Richard Branson, Jeff Bezos, and Elon Musk. Rich adventurers are lining up with wallets out to be among the first star men and women. Better yet, companies such as SpaceX and Orbital ATK have actually proven their launch vehicles by delivering satellites or payloads to extraterrestrial destinations. You might be surprised to know that commercial space ventures have received more than $18.4 billion of investment since 2000. Recent progress by two of the most well-funded companies, Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin, have made space enthusiasts more optimistic than in prior years about the future of human space exploration via non-government firms. So, do you think private space companies could prove a landmark in deep space exploration? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel with all notifications enabled to get all the latest updates.